This is an official recording of Desert Stars, an unofficial Warhammer 40k story. Written and narrated by Delio Perra. Music and other sounds by Mad Cow. Chapter 29 Amonti spent most all his waking hours in the armory, repairing the chapter's weapons, modifying them in ways to produce ever more efficient death, and drafting up new means of delivering punishment to the enemies of the Holy Emperor of Mankind, blessed be his name forever and always. Achilla thumped the side of her fist against the wood-lined stone frame of Amonti's door. As she waited for the weaponsmith to look up from his work, she swatted the tan, gold-edged tabard hanging between her legs on a length of woven sagal roots. The small, fast-growing desert shrub appeared in the shade of rock outcroppings and was harvested for its many uses. At one moment, Amonti's back was turned to Achilla, and he jabbed a finger at the ceiling, hewn from rock. The cleanliness, the order, of Amonti's workroom always astounded Achella. There was a place for each and every tool, fastener and part. If an item wasn't in use, it was in its home. Each time she visited him, she was reminded of the mechanics that worked on the sand skimmers back in the Sinash clan caves. Their workstations were as different from Amonti's as possible. Each bay had spare parts and dirty rags strewn all about, more tools were on the floor than in their chests. When they were done for the day, and they put their things away, if they even did, they scooped their things up and dumped them in a great heap. A couple of the mechanics were better than others, but most couldn't have cared less about keeping their things in good order. It had always amazed Achilla to see them treat their things with such poor care, then later complain about how they would have to buy a new tool because the one they had was broken or had gone missing. Amonti wiped his hands off on a large rag, gave his work table a quick wipe, and spread the cloth over what he'd been working on to hide it. He spun on his stool, the metal creaking under his weight. Malakad said you wanted to see me? Yes, I've been working on a weapon for you. Achilla felt the murmurings of surprise at that, even felt the very human emotion that would lift her eyebrows to show the feeling, but laid over those feelings and impulses was a cloud of calm. Her eyes remained still, and the surprise faded as fast as it had come. In its wake, she saw only the raw facts and was left with a question. What sort of weapon? The edges of Amonti's lips twitched, hinting at a smile. Ralkin showed me the report of your first mission. He picked up a data slate from his workstation and tapped it. Something about... He continued to tap the slate. Nah, a doctor? Hmm, I was just looking at it. He shrugged and dropped the device back on the table. No reason to read a report when I have you right here, huh? Achella smiled. She liked Monty. He was always so cheerful, and his workshop felt more warm to her than the other spaces in the lighthouse's caves. Where every other of the lighthouse's rooms she'd seen was clean to the point of sterile, Amonti's was unique with its wood-paneled walls. Gun and weapon parts were strewn across multiple tables, every part on a white cloth and in order. There were bolters, las guns, stubbers, and things that Chella didn't know the names of in various states of repair. Some were little more than a handle and a barrel. Others were exquisite specimens. These later examples were mounted on the wall. A small multi-limbed servitor clambered around the room, sweeping unseen dust and further ordering parts that already seemed as tidy as possible. Achella watched the little thing move about until Amonti spoke again. Achella? Oh, I'm sorry, yes? How was your first mission? It was alright, I guess. I liked the planet. That was not what he'd expected her to first mention. Ma, yes. And how about your task? The killing of the doctor. How did you feel about that? Achella continued to watch the cleaning servitor go about its work. Okay. Amonti reached forward and lifted the girl's chin so that she would face him. She fought back, resisting the gesture, not wanting to meet his eyes. Feeling her discomfort, he pulled his hand away. I saw that Ralkin only gave you a knife. That might have been a little unwise. I told him that was far too much to trust you with. I think he's pushing you too hard. They keep on acting like you're a new recruit, a boy to be turned into one of us. Can't I be? 
No, but then it wouldn't hurt so much, she said, more to herself than to him. What's that? What wouldn't hurt? Everything. She sat without even knowing she was doing it. She was utterly exhausted. She could sleep for a week and it wouldn't help. Maybe a month-long coma would do it, but her body wasn't meant to endure the pace Ralkin and the others were pushing. Combined with Malakad's constant blood drawing, she was ever in a state of pain and half-conscious wakefulness. God, Imper alive, what are they doing to you? Amonti slid off his chair and took a knee next to her. He cupped the side of her face, and this time she did meet his gaze. Sit tight. She wanted to say okay, but why bother? She only wanted to tip over and fall asleep. It was the tone that woke her more than the words being spoken. There was an intensity to the conversation she'd never heard among the lighthouses before. When a couple of humans argue, the common emotion is anger, often combined with frustration. The only thing present here was controlled disappointment on one side and an unwillingness to comply on the other. They were outside of Amonti's room, a short ways into the hall. You have no say in the matter, said Malakad. This is insanity. You're going to kill her. What you and Ralkin are doing will destroy her. And you know this how. Since when did you become so proficient in the ways of body that you will know when and how someone will be doomed? If you are such a master in the workings of the flesh, maybe I should have consulted you about Sayuld and Lomeshko. That's not what I mean. Don't twist my words. No, I am not an apothecary. I know very little of that world, but it doesn't take one of your talents to see that the girl is so tired she passed out on the floor of my workshop. Did she really? Because she's listening to us right at this moment. If she's as tired as you say, shouldn't she be unconscious right at this moment? There was a pause in the conversation, and Achella imagined both lighthouses looking through the wall at her. It was Amonti that spoke first. That she's awake now changes nothing of what I've been saying. You can't push her this hard. She's not like us and never will be. I am doing only what Sivalkan has asked of me, and I have to assume Ralkan is in the same position. You said yourself that you know very little of my world, so let me concern myself with our young charge's well-being. Hearing Malakad say, well-being filled Achella with frustration and anger. How could he talk about being concerned about her at all, when he never spoke to her beyond a few words here and there, always drawing her blood without any mention of why? Ralkin was better in that he at least talked to her and was kind, but he did push a pace that Attila thought would break her. There had been nights when she could barely crawl into bed and fell into such a deep sleep so fast she didn't remember her dreams, which, for her, was as strange as anything. She had always been a vivid dreamer and could recall enough of them to talk for hours. But that all changed when her training with the lighthouses had begun. Attila clawed herself up off the floor. Everything hurt. Every part of her body ached. Her bones burned, her muscles were liquid, and yet she still had the strength of will to get to her feet. Her hands searched for purchase on a smooth wood wall and she slipped. The sound of her falling brought both lighthouses into the room in a flash. Ah, you see? Not just awake, but up and about. Malakad motioned to the girl and cast a smile to Amati. Go easy on her. Why? I think Ralkin should push her even harder. You've been listening to an official recording of Desert Stars, an unofficial Warhammer 40k story, written and narrated by Delio Para. Music and other sounds by Mad Cow.